you know, the difference between Hamas, Hezbollah, whatever the case may be. But when it comes to the Middle and Arab or a Palestinian, all of a the sudden they became political. They, they cannot go over the fact you could be an accountant or a friend or a neighbor. Right. You can talk about other issues. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I've spent my life trying to say, oh, no, 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 but I'm, I'm just a person. I'm yeah. an actress. I'm a, uh -huh. I'm a human being. I'm a woman. I, you know, these are my beliefs about this. This I like to, um, you know, this is what I like to eat. This is what I like to do. And so finally I got so frustrated. I, I was like, I'm going to say it once in a show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then people can understand. And I think, you know, I really wanted to create the show to give people a, a, a glimpse into, very personal glimpse into just one Palestinian woman's life. And, you know, I have the same desires as most people. I have the same, you know, you, it follows me living, uh, growing up in San Francisco and then moving to Ramallah. And um, you moved to Ramallah, you said a little bit, and, and tell us a little bit about that. Uh, when was that? took place and uh, why is that? Well, I moved to Ramallah in, two, in the summer of 2000. Uh -huh. um, when you say a move, not a visit. Well, I, technically I went initially as a visit. Uh -huh. um, I was working as an actress in New York and I was frustrated with the way my career was going and um, I was spending a lot of time working in restaurants and not on the stage. Acting and there, so like a bigger acting, tip. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> acting like I cared about what you wanted to order. And <laughs> That's an Egyptian waiter. Uh, he, he looks so handsome. And I was in Egypt in a cafe and he said, you should be acting. And uh, you, know, you look like uh, you know, Omar Sharif. He said, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm acting like I care what you want to eat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, and I, so I at this point, at this point, I just wanted to take a break. I really wanted to take a break. I felt like I was um, going on these auditions, and there were no roles for Arabs, so I had to be something else. But then, well, some roles. but then I wasn't. I was well at the time in two thousand, not oh, so I much. Oh, I see. And um, so, okay, maybe we can cast you as Mexican, but you're not really. You don't act Mexican. You know what? A, what, is, what does that mean? And so it's like I really couldn't fit into these other, well, you're kind of Indian, but yeah. you don't really, you know, do you speak some Hindi? No. Um, it's amazing that actually they have a conversation yeah, about Yeah, no, no, this. they do, actually. It's in the show, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, so at that time I was just very frustrated and I think looking for something deeper. And I thought, you know what, let me go figure out where I'm from. Let me go to Ramallah, where my parents are from, and see what it's like just for the summer. And so I went there to study Arabic. I didn't learn any Arabic. <laughs> and I spent the time going to cafes. I spent the time going to cafes and, and staying with people and meeting people and uh, hanging out with young That's people. That's your first time? First time to visit Palestine? To visit. And it was amazing. And I didn't want to leave. Wow. So I decided to stay. I was going to stay and get a job. And of course, the Intifada started. <laughs> and my parents called me and said, Get your, <laughs> you know, get home. And I said, No, no, no. I mean, people can live yeah. here. People live here. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know. And, um, and so I stayed, and it, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And, you know, they kept calling saying, Get home. It's too crazy, yeah. you know. And, and I felt like, um, I didn't want to leave because A, I was really finding a connection with where I came from. And so what were you doing besides? I was working for a theater company um, that did uh, theater for social development. So I they see. were doing really great work. And I was also spending time um, filming stuff yeah. going mm -hmm. on there. And, uh, you know, just. Kind what do you do in a way, stereotyping also? By being an American there, because sometimes you are here, you're not really fully American, where oh, you're yeah. from. You go over there, you're not fully Egyptian or fully Palestinian. Yeah. So how, how, did, how did you fit in there? Well, because I could be American, I could get away with a lot more, yeah. so that was good. <laughs> really. um, I could get through checkpoints when other people couldn't. I could talk to soldiers and say, yeah. hey, listen, man, I'm, yeah. you know, and... And so there was, there was a level of power mm -hmm. that I had that other people didn't have, which made me feel like I really needed to stay because yeah. I had access to things yeah. um, 
and to communicating about things or shooting video when I was there that other people didn't have access to. But I also felt like the Palestinian, Palestinian community there really welcomed me. They were so excited that I would want to come back. Like, are you crazy? Mm. Why? <laughs> You're so connected yeah. to your community, you mm. want to come back? So they were very welcoming. But, you know, they, it was also culturally, I grew up Amer American. Mm -hmm. And so, They'd be like, ah, because you're Ashnabi, and I'm Ashnabi. <laughs> yeah, I'm from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, French. This is, yeah, and and that's probably as an artist, and how how you react to this kind of uh, out of place, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, in your play, you try to recreate a new reality or new environment that you can fit in. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like that's the, the, the show. The show is about me just claiming a space where all of the different things that don't make sense, mm. the parts of being Palestinian here that don't fit in, the parts of being American there that don't fit in, all fit in in the show mm. because it's just my story. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I get to tell only the parts I want to tell. <laughs> so it's fit in your skin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's perfect representation. Yeah, makes sense. But, uh, I think the show has been really powerful as well for people because um, I think they're not used to hearing such a personal, such an honest, per, you know, point Brutally of view. Brutally honest, they say. Brutally honest point of view about how it feels to try to fit in both places, but also how do you react when when people have all these expectations of you, have all these negative expectations oh, of where you're from and what you're supposed to do. How do you fit in and what, how do you negotiate your identity? And I think once I, once I got to Palestine, um, I felt like, oh, I'm home, you know? Ooh. I felt I was at home, but the situation got violent and more violent and more violent and I wasn't, equipped emotionally mm -hmm. to deal with it because I really, you know, the people who grew up in that kind of situation, they've created mechanisms, you deal know, with to it. deal with it. Yeah. And I didn't have that. So a part of the show really talks about the breakdown of my, my emotional state because I felt like I'm home, but I was so sensitive to all of the violence and it really affected me and I got very angry. And um, so like angry at the violence, whom you angry at yourself or the the, um, the, the fact you are there? Or? A couple different things. I was very angry at the Israelis, of course, yeah. um, and at the occupation, and so angry that my friends were so talented and so ambitious and wanted to just you know live their lives and and hang out and be young and go to a party and mm -hmm. experience all the things that young people want to experience, human. and they had no access to this. Mm. Uh, they didn't have hobbies, they didn't have books, they didn't have, uh, there's no clubs, there's nowhere to learn something. If you want to learn a skill, you can't, there's no karate class, there's no, you don't learn another language. I mean, they have these you minor things. Rocks. You can throw rocks. But <laughs> these, these minor things that we don't take dance classes, there, we don't learn about this because there's no place to do it. And no. those are the daily things that made me really angry that they didn't have access. You are reduced to just that uh, kind of uh, yeah. life. And, uh, th th so you decided to come. To come back. back. Yes. How was the re-entry to the United States? Uh, how long did you stay there? I stayed until September 1st, 2001. So about uh, a year and a half? To yeah, a year and a half. So how was the re-entry? Very difficult, very yeah. Sometimes difficult. Sometimes it's harder than the, even the first. Yeah. Uh, um, it was very hard to come back, and then September 11th happened 10 days later, so it was like, okay, really? <laughs> What's happening? And like, the father there, I mean, I was why did you go and visit Egypt to, or know, some change or take place? I came back to New York, and I said, you know, the first thing I said to my friend when I, when I arrived is, I can't, I'm so... I have, I'm exhausted. so happy to be in a place that there's no war. Oh, I see when you came. When I came back to America. And, but I said, but everybody seems naked. <laughs> it's summer in New York. Yeah. It's just, I, you know, I was so craving being in a place where it was just, you could just do, you could just be normal. Yeah. You could just go have a coffee with your friend and not be like, oh my God, there might be bombing. Yeah. They might have the checkpoints closed or, Interesting. Take you this know, for granted. these are things you take for so much for granted. I want to take a yoga class. 
my God, it's like impossible to do something. And that's what's missing in, uh, in, in Palestine on this area, or uh, even in Egypt, in those places of trouble, the, the, the sense of normalcy, mm -hmm. it's just not there. It's not there. And it, it's really, it's, it, 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 it kind of deprived you of being a normal human. Yeah, I, and I think that's the thing that made me the most, uh, just, I felt so, frustrated that the people there were not having any experience to expand themselves, to, to develop as human beings because their lives were so limited. They, not, not, I mean, they don't even have access to food. They don't have access to education, to medical, uh, let alone a yoga class. I mean, this yoga. is like a... <laughs>